Good morning to all traders. Welcome to the FX Miners Market Insights video provided to you by Orbex Tower Sources here. It is the 11th of June today, Thursday, and we're going to talk about, uh, well, what was it? It was Euro Kiwi, uh, Euro Aussie, Aussie Swiss Franc, and also the dollar against the Chinese one, which is what we're going to start with. Before we go into the technical slow, let's just take a minute to understand what's really happened yesterday in the OFMC. Well, as we expected, interest rates unchanged. Now, Fetcher said that are likely to remain uh, in the lower end, uh, near zero, until the, to 2022, because inflation is expecting to peak. And I, I, why would inflation be expected to peak? <laughs> That's the, the truth, right? Now, the, 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 um, the Fed said that they might do more on the monetary policy end, and they called uh, again on the White House to do their own bit. But um, it seems that and Munich also actually um, um, reiterated before the, uh, the speech and before the rate decision that uh, Congress isn't really going to do much. Actually, they're going to take uh, the foot off the pedal right now, and that might start uh, weakening, um, well, the equities, I would say. Now, when we take into consideration that the, the outlook for employment is very gloomy, plus that the employment benefits are going to end at some point very soon, then... Uh, the picture changes a little bit, right? So if you watched our yesterday videos, we talked about exactly that, what we expect uh, from Fed Chair to, um, to say, and how is that likely to affect the markets. Now, if we put that aside for a minute and jump onto this, uh, the, the charts, I'm analyzing today those pairs because they're very, very important, in my opinion, for the medium term. Because when we look at the Q and the Aussie, they have had an amazing recovery. They're still actually moving up. Economic data coming in are showing a very good, um, very optimistic view, okay? Retail sales, electronic sales for the uh, Kiwi, then demand uh, for commodities increasing with the industrial uh, areas uh, reopening in Australia as well. So uh, it's going to be a very interesting, um, I mean, the next few months are going to be very interesting. Now, without further ado, and since I've taken a lot of time on talking on the fundamentals, let's just go quickly on USDC and H. We talked about this, we're expecting this to become an ending triangle, right? So we said that this is an ABC, WX, uh, right? <laughs> and we're expecting uh, this ended up here. We're expecting prices to move lower, right? Now, note that we haven't even we haven't even went up yet to complete the, min um, uh, the uh, minor three, intermediate three, sorry, of the ending triangle, right? Because we're seeing this as a triple zigzag, W, X, Y, X, and Z, right? Expect it to be some sort of even, maybe perhaps an open triangle as well. We'll see how this pans out. But um, th the truth is, is we've got waves A and B down over here, and I'm expecting this to move a little bit lower as well, because first of all, we didn't take that out, and second, this looks incomplete. Once we complete this level, then we'll go up for wave Z, or it could be wave E if we take this into uh, open triangle um, consideration, okay? And from there, that would be three, then four, and five. Uh, now we'll uh, jump on, okay, let's go on Euro QE. Um, Euro QE, we haven't looked about this for a while. Anyway, up here we had primary wave ending. Uh, it's also a primary one because we have intermediate also ending up here. Uh, we'll have this triangle here and then price is moved lower for a while now. I see this as a leading triangle. Uh, I see B wave here being an expanded flat. And now we're looking at wave, minor wave one, two, three is done, and we are in the midst of wave four. Now this wave four could take, if this is an ABC, they most likely want to turn into a triangle pattern for wave four because wave two is sharp, and then wave five down to the 168, 169 or so, because this is the uh, 61.8 Fibonacci extension for the move downside, as well as a confluence level, the 50 Fibonacci retracement of the upside move over here. So this is a very good level. And at the same time is where um, wave four ended as well, okay? So usually we do see prices going at least in the first leg down to wave four, okay? And then either we're gonna get a move up to continue, or that's gonna be a B, and then we're gonna see another move downside for C. So this could be just a W, X, and Y, okay? Or we end with an ABC and then move higher. Uh, now, Euro against the Aussie. Uh, well, a similar pattern, I must admit. However, 
this is an ABC over here, okay? So we had one, two, three, four, five, finished. This one, to me, because of the structure, of course, it doesn't look uh, like it's, uh, it's a leading triangle, but uh, of a impulsive mode to the downside, right? So we have five waves over here for wave A, and then it looks like we're going to move up for wave B now, okay? These waves already are looking corrective, and that suggests that we might get a W, uh, X and Y for wave B. So I'm looking for prices to start moving higher, to be honest, a little bit, okay, because we also see a signal on the RSI here. The first level will be 167 or so, which is previous wave four. As we said before, previous wave four is always expected to be reached and then start moving lower. Now, of course, the other scenario is, and this is wave A, right? The other scenario is that we actually move down as, this is pretty much just a simple correction. Uh, if we remain let's just say below the 164.60, then most likely we're gonna go a little bit lower to take out the 61.8 Fibonacci retracement of the move to the upside, which is 159.80, right? Because we missed that. Uh, or even lower uh, to this low over here, okay? Which is the uh, 158.99. And once we do that, then we're looking for wave B and then C. What I would really pay attention is if we break above the 164.55, okay? And last, let's take a minute to also look quickly at the Aussie against the Swiss franc. Uh, this is a request, and I am actually doing that for that specific reason. Uh, I'm seeing this as the end of this ending diagonal that we have been expecting for a while, one, two, three, four, and five, okay? Which means this is either wave one primary or wave A primary, okay? Now, within that, we've got an A, B, C, right? Now, if it's, of course, an A primary, which means a correction, a W, so excuse me. Uh, if it's a one, then we're looking at this being uh, one, two, three, four, and five, okay? But I think this is a correction, okay? Uh, because I'm still, I'm still not convinced that we're not gonna see another low, okay? Despite whatever the case is, in the short and medium term, I'm looking at this to come a little bit lower down because I think this is an A, uh, this ABC, um, it's not ended yet, okay? Because we didn't get the 61.8 Fibonacci extension of waves A and B at 67.88. So um, this, to me, is going to be a wave four. We can get even down to, well, 64, and then move up for wave five. We're taking the 88.8 Fibonacci extension, which is a dip indeed, but we missed this and we missed the 61.8 as well, okay? And at the end of the day, we can even go up to the minus wave two, or the two wave two key, 68.41, which is below, uh, somewhere between the two levels that we just uh, called. So in case this uh, um, breaks below the uh, 64, then it means that we've had one, two, three, four, and five. But because of this multi-structure here, uh, this is one, two, three, four, and five, okay? Um, so, which means it's one, two, three, we're gonna get a four and another five, right? So that is the only reason I'm looking at this to uh, actually have another move to the upside, another attempt after we completely, uh, we complete successfully this move to the downside.